Hello and welcome back to another Tasty Blender 2.83 tutorial with your host, a guy who decided that it's a good idea to start 3D in his 30s. You might have seen these animations around Instagram or Facebook or whatever, particularly from a user named Zoloc. I really liked the stretching and all of that stuff and it got me thinking how to make that in Blender. So I kind of figured out a way of how to do it. It's really easy it's not complicated at all uh we'll be taking a look at basically just cloth and how to set up cloth simulations how to set up collisions so we can achieve that type of result in this part we'll just take a look at mesh and objects so let's get to a hundred like and i can make a part two with texturing and lighting and everything else so let's get into it First things first, uh, we need a face. Basically, we're gonna need a male face. So I just searched male free 3D models from Free3D. You can get some pretty decent like male meshes that are completely fine for this tutorial. If you have any better objects, feel free to use those. So I, in this case, I'm just gonna use this one. So after downloading the OBJ file, I'm just gonna open up Blender 2.83. I'm gonna select everything in the scene and just delete it. Now I need to import my model. I do it by going to file, import, obj, and find the folder in which you've saved your model and import it. After importing, your model should look like this or the model that you chose. I'm just gonna go with uh, numpad one to front view and I'm gonna go into edit mode. Now I'll go into wireframe with Z and I'll just press C and then select whatever it's on the top of his head like up until his clavicles. I'm gonna exit, and then I'm just trying to find a good line that I can use in, in my case. It's just about selecting the mesh properly, how your mesh is gonna behave when you apply cloth simulation. Just gonna clean up the selections a bit. I'm not going to be mega precise here because it's not necessarily that important. Control I, uh, X, and I'm just gonna delete everything. I'll join these two guys in the middle, just shift select them and M to merge at center. So I get this little guy, I'm just gonna extend it down. So the thing we need to take into account is the cloth. So the cloth will have to be self-sustained, so it's going to be raised. So we need to select a pin group and work on that pin group and also maybe make the eye socket, the nose and the mouth openings. So we have to just clean up this uh, mesh slightly I'm just gonna make the eye sockets, just delete a couple of vertices inside. Again, I'm doing it very, just like going with the flow. I, if I had more time, I would definitely just focus in on that. I'm just selecting the vertices that need to be cut so we can get everything done. So something like this should, should work. Uh, we need to kind of get rid of this triangle over here. So I'm just going to try and move these uh, into different spots so that they don't interlope too much with our cloth simulation. This should be completely fine for now. Now, the next thing is deciding on how to create your pin group. So we can just select, let's say, a couple of these loops down here like that. So we're just holding up the neck. Uh, we're gonna go into object data properties, vertex groups, and assign them to a group. Now, after we've done that, that's gonna be, for example, our cold group. Now let's move into the physics settings and we're gonna set up a cloth collision. And we're gonna set up our cloth physics. So when it comes to cloth, uh, first, things, first thing we gotta do, go down to shape and then pin your group. So basically we're gonna use the group that we've made previously, the hold group. Now I'm gonna change the end to be at about 60. So we have a nice enough loop. And if I press play, we can see that it is holding our head, but the head isn't floating. So one way of going about that is, first of all, we have to do the internal springs, which is going to hold our head upwards. They are also affected by tension compression, uh, which are also in the stiffness and damping options up here. I usually start messing with those after I've done everything related to collisions. 
I'm just going to add a simple object inside. So I'm going to go uh, shift control alt C origin to geometry and I'm going to press shift S cursor to world origin and go shift S selection to cursor. Now, if I go back to the beginning of my simulation, my head is directly in the world origin. Shift A mesh UV sphere. Now let's go into wireframe. I'm going to scale it down with S so it's inside of our head. Numpad 1 to go into front view, G, Z, and I'm just going to position it so it's basically near the mouth. Now, by the outline, I can see that I have to minimize it even more. I just want it to be slightly larger than the sides. Then I'm going to go S, Shift, uh, Y, and I'm just going to scale the sphere like that. S to return just a bit of weight, so it's, again, a bit larger, like that. Now, we can go into more detailed modeling, but for example, make an egg that's bottom heavy and top, it's a bit lighter or narrower, and it's going to have a bit more visual interest. This is just to show you the principle. Now we're going to keyframe this, so I'm going to press I, insert location, and then I'm going to move to like frame 60, uh, move it on the Y axis by pressing G and Y, and let's move it over here. I'm going to press I and location again. To play, our egg exits. Now we have to set up the collisions so our face actually responds to the egg. So we do that by selecting our sphere, clicking on collision. Now the collision is going to be the outer, it's going to be 0 0.02, so they have to be really tight. And the inner should be from 0 0.02 to 0 0.04 with our cloth we have to first press play so we can kind of see what's happening. So we get kind of a weird response. Now, this is because we have to fine tune some of the settings in our collisions and also some of the general settings of the hair. So object collisions, first of all, distance, we're going to drop it low like 0 0.001. We're going to increase the quality of the collisions. So let's have or because the reproduction of the collisions is going to be much better that way. We'll just set a bit of self collisions with the head at a distance of 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.004 and a friction of 3. Let's press play. Let's test it out. So again, it's not moving as we want it to move. It still has a bit of resistance. So let's increase the distance so it responds a bit differently. Uh, if you still have issues, it's always good to just go with the impulse clamping. So basically, this will try and stabilize unstable simulations like that. And we can try and play with the tension and the compression. Now, in some cases, I tend to use a very high coefficient of tension and compression, at like 50. And I try to lower down the bending to 0 0.4 or 0 0.3, depending on the situation. We can also increase the quality steps of our cloth. We're going to go, let's say, up to 20 steps. And let's see what that gives us. It's all about just trying and finding the sweet spot that where everything works in your favor. So we can see that the collision is much better right now. So it's actually behaving as it should. Though the distance between the sphere and the mouth is Kinda, it's a huge gap, so we're going to drop the distance further down, so 0 0.002. Increase the impulse clamping because we'll need that to stabilize our animation. Let's press play again. Uh, if you have too much lag, you can always just uh, set your cache to end at 60 and then bake every time so you can observe more precisely. Still have quite a quite a large gap. So again, we'll have to return into our settings, our thickness outer to 0 0.008, let's say. And inner is going to be 0, 0, 0 0.03. Our head, let's drop the distance to 0 0.0015. Of collisions are fine. We can set them to be at 0 0.003. Like I said, this is a this is a fine tuning. This is how I usually fine tune. And if you are ever confused, this is how you start to fine tune your simulations. So now we have a good enough result. 
And we can actually use a simple trick to balance out this gap. We can just add a solidify on top and add a subdivision surface on top. So after the actual cloth, so it doesn't interlope with our cloth. And let's just see how we can set up this solidify so it actually hugs the sphere. So again, we're gonna press play. Let's see what happens with our mouth. So the actual like collision is much tighter right now. The lips return to their original space. Uh, let's see it at a higher frame rate. So when it's baked, you're just gonna see it at a 24 frames per second frame rate. Now, when it comes to this, again, we can still play around. We can maybe decrease the bending. We can decrease the compression. We can play around with the settings. And I do encourage you to play around with the settings, but you can get really interesting results when you try different settings. It depends on what you want, because for example, if we try the bending of one, this means that the cloth will try to resist the bending motion a bit more. So it's going to be a bit more elastic. But sometimes it can give you these guys over here. that are basically just vertices that are going to pop around. Now, if you know which vertices are, you can try and basically clean those up too. So you can, for example, just click on them, uh, either merge them up or merge the whole loop up. But Again, it's better to just get it right with the bending and with the settings so you don't have any issues of the cloth turning uh, itself in and out. Drop it down to 0 0.04 or 0 0.3, basically at the point where it was prior to that. And that's going to be it. Now, before you do anything else, always uh, bake your cache, always bake your particles. Always take care of that because otherwise in the rendering or any other stuff, it's, it's just going to give you a headache. Another thing that's useful to know, sometimes Blender will kind of glitch out with cloth and physics and hair simulations. So if that happens, you can just really quickly change one of the parameters and then return it back to its original position. And that's going to reset sort of the system so it doesn't give you any more headaches. But yeah, now we have our egg exiting our character. So basically that's it. Very simple. It's just a matter of fine tuning your simulation, fine tuning your cloth. Uh, try different objects, maybe try some more complicated objects. The amount of calculation, it's gonna go up uh, quite a bit when you do that. But in the end, it's kind of worth it because it's uh, funny to see like the, the plastic behavior of the character around another really strange object. Like I said, if you want to see a part two to this tutorial, uh, feel free to uh, tell me in the comments or drop a like. It always helps me out. Uh, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.